Hey, what's up everybody? Terry White here. And today we're gonna to take a look at masking or basically making selections inside of Lightroom Classic and Lightroom Desktop. Now I'm gonna be doing most of this in Lightroom Desktop, but people always ask, hey, does that same feature work in Lightroom Desktop? Or some of you refer to it as the cloud version. Yes, it is the same. I just don't need to show it two times, that's all. So I'll show it in Lightroom Classic. I'll bounce over to Lightroom Desktop just for a second and show you that it's there but we're gonna do it all in Classic and everything I'm gonna show you in Classic works the exact same way in Lightroom Desktop. So without further ado, what are we talking about when we say masking or making selections? For example, I've got this image uh, of a landscape I took in Iceland uh, a few years back. And if I wanted to select the sky, well, we have AI masking for that. And go to the masking icon. Here it is in Lightroom, Des Lightroom Classic. And if we pop over to Lightroom Desktop, there's the masking icon for Lightroom Desktop as well. It's got the same options. Let's go back. And now, uh, for example, if I wanted to select the sky, there's a sky button. Select the sky, boom, there's a sky selected. Now I could do anything I want to the sky and it's just selecting the sky. Now, over the years, we've added more and more AI masking capabilities to Lightroom Classic and Lightroom Desktop. And this used to be all manual back in the day. You'd have to grab the brush and brush the whole sky and get the, make sure it's perfect. And then you would do your adjustment taking so much more time. But now it's just as easy as making uh, a one click button. So I'm gonna go undo that, undo that. And also I wanna point out that, you know, subject, sky and background have been around for a while, but there's also categories like landscape. So if I go to landscape, that will give, that will detect the various things in this particular photo. So it sees a sky, it sees mountains, it sees water, it sees artificial ground, which is the asphalt, and it sees natural ground, which is the ground. So it sees those things automatically and it can make masks based on those as well. So again, I'm gonna undo that. Now we're gonna switch over to a different image. This time we're gonna switch over to a person. And same thing, as soon as I switch over to the person, it detects the person. And yes, it is the same way in Lightroom desktop. If I go to masking on this person, it'll detect people and there she is. And I click and yes, it's giving me the same things that it can make selections for automatically based on uh, AI. So again, I select her and back in Lightroom Classic, same thing. So no more trips to Lightroom desktop, you'd know it's the same. All right, so if I wanted to select, for example, her uh, lips, I can select her lips, create a mask for that and make uh, color changes to her lipstick if I wanted to do that. So that's the beauty of this AI masking. But what happens when you wanna make a selection of something that isn't one of those categories? It's not the lips, it's not the clothing, it's not the eyes, it's not the teeth, it's not any of those things. I'll give you a perfect example. Let's pop over to this image here of uh, one that I took of a, a, a antique bank vault door. So, um, well, if I go over to the masking, well, there's subject, I don't know, what's the subject? What's it gonna think is the subject in this photo? The subject to me is the whole door. But if I click subject, it thinks it's that, uh, you know, the thing that's probably out the furthest in front. It thinks it's the locking mechanism. Well, let's undo that because it's not what I want. There's no sky, there's no background, there's no landscape. I could brush still, and I still use all the older methods, but you notice there's a category we skipped over called objects. When I click object masking, you have two choices. You can use the mask, and this is before, when, I, when this feature first came out, you know, a couple of years back, I thought you could only use the brush. And I was like, oh yeah, it works, but that's still time consuming. I completely forgot, or not forgot, I didn't see this other option here back then, which was basically making a marquee selection, just like you would in Photoshop. So for example, I don't want this mechanism. I want this hinge. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make a selection around it. And notice I'm even including parts of other things, but it's smart enough to say, oh, you want that thing. Okay, gotcha. I've selected that thing for you. And now I could go in and make any adjustments I want to it, and it's only affecting the object I selected. So object masking is just that easy. It created a mask for it. You could go in and name that mask. We're gonna call this the top middle hinge. And you can call it whatever you want, but that way you'll know if you make multiple masks, which you can, you can add a new one, and you can make another mask. So let's say I wanna grab the object, uh, select objects here. I wanna grab this one over here on the uh, left-hand side. So I'm just gonna start at the top, 
go all the way over, make a selection of that. And now I've got another mask for that. And I can call this uh, top left hinge. And that way I can create as many masks and add, by the way, you can also add to a mask. So if I click add, let's say I want them all to be the same color, then I would just keep adding object mass and making those selections one by one so that they all get added. So for example, to the top hinge, let's say just for fun, we go ahead and add another object to it and we wanna add this thing that it thought was the main subject. So we'll just go ahead and add that. And now that's been added to it. So now both of those are in the same mask. So if I were to go over and make a change to them, they both get affected because I was able to add them to the same mask. So object selection is critical in Lightroom Classic and Lightroom Desktop for when you want to make selections of things that aren't obvious, things that aren't part of the, you know, the main categories. It's not the subject, it's not hair, it's not teeth, it's not uh, water, it's not any of the things that are automatically identified. These are things that will obviously never have a category to themselves, but you can still make selections. So even if we go back to the person, and we say, well, okay, great. I have this great person mask that it made. And we'll go back to the masking there. And if I were to go ahead and add a new one, yeah, I can add a more people stuff, but I want to get that flower. That flower is not part of any of these. So I'll go to select objects once again, and I'll just go ahead and select the flower. And boom, just like that, it makes a mask of the flower. And then I can do anything I want to that flower. I can also lower the exposure of it, bring it down and make a mask just that easily. And just keep in mind that if it grabs too much or not enough, you can always add or subtract from that selection and you can use the brush to do it. So just for the fun of it, I'll go to subtract. I'll say, yeah, use the brush because maybe I didn't want that part of the flower, even though I did. But maybe I don't want that part of the flower so I can brush off that part. And then the mask is still the same mask, but now when I'm making adjustments, that part of the original flower stays the same because I was able to selectively subtract from it and tell it what I wanted, wanted to mask or unmask in this case. So go ahead and check out the objects object masking in both Lightroom Classic and Lightroom Desktop, it will change your workflow from now on when you wanna select specific objects that aren't part of the normal AI masking that you just wanna select that object without having to brush the whole thing manually. With that said, cheers everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye everybody.